Mike with My World 2 visits a small family business in the western Iowa hills, building a unique line of bikes designed to sustain people's health, wellness, and comfort. Sustainability on two wheels. Kelly, it's great to be here with you. Will you share with us where we're at and what you do? Yeah, well, we're in beautiful southwest Iowa, and we call it God's country. And it's a beautiful place, and uh, we're at the world headquarters of uh, Day 6 Bicycles. You know, our house is 100 yards from our business, which is awesome. I have, my wife helps me, so it's truly a, a mom and pop cottage business. Well, the great thing is we have the building and our home on the same property, and um, I'm able to walk to work. Um, sometimes I'll ride my bike to work, but it's only 100 yards, so that's not a huge deal. But yeah, it saves everything on, on driving, on time. Uh, I can spend more time at work. I can, you know, I'm not in the car as much. Working from home, our near home is wonderful. So great to be able to just walk home for lunch and come back. Love it. Where do you see bikes going in this country, especially in this time of, you know, all these changes in our society and whatever? Where do you see the bikes fitting in? I'm not sure we'll ever be Amsterdam, but we're definitely increasing. We're getting more and more uh, bike paths, uh, bike friendly uh, routes. Big feature is our population is getting older, so more people are, want to extend their sustainability for themselves and ride bikes longer. In Iowa, there's tons of rails to trails. They've uh, torn up railroad tracks. I read somewhere where the number one um, real estate in America is bike path. So not ocean view, but if your house is near a bike path within a mile, that is like primo property. And that's why Florida is so good, because they have long, wide, planned bike routes for people to ride their bikes. So that's why there's a lot of biking in Florida. It doesn't yeah. hurt that it's flat and warm. I was too. gonna say, not too many hills either right. there in Florida. Right. Which on that note, electric bikes. Tell us where are they now? Where are they going? It, it's something a few years ago you didn't seem to hear too much about. One thing you gotta keep in mind is the cyclists kind of ran the biking industry. This is my opinion. They ran the cycling industry for years and it was the guy with the chiseled legs. And that's great. You know, if you can ride a hundred miles, more power to you. But now it's more of the, uh, the average Joe, the, uh, the regular cyclist. And so what these people want, they don't want a skinny tired bike that's really uncomfortable. They want something that's more comfortable, but the motor allows them now to ride way farther than they used to. So if they used to get tired at 10 miles, they can go 40 or 50 miles now. Now they can get up the hill that they weren't able to get up before. So truly the electric bike is extending the pleasure of bike riding for people. Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, one of the misnomers is uh, electric bikes is cheating. And it's like, I always tell people is, well, do you put your milk in the creek or do you put it in the refrigerator? And it's like electric bike, it's not cheating if you need it. And so um, somebody that's um, obese or has bad knees or anything like that, electric bike is a wonderful thing because it, it helps reverse that as well as giving them the pleasure of biking. I love bikes. Bikes are so fun. So the, the happy stories really make it, you know, worthwhile to me when you've got somebody who's just really experiencing good health where they were struggling before because they're now out riding their bike. That was a, that's really the happy part of the business. When was the bike invented? I think the first one was called the Bone Crusher and it was, a, a, the one I've seen was from 1865 and it didn't even have pedals on it. It was just a wooden frame with two wheels and you just kind of used your feet to propel it. So the late 1800s. The interesting thing about bikes though is if you go to the late 1800s and you look at the bikes and they were mainly made for racers, but if you look at today's bikes, yeah, today's bikes, they have titanium and carbon fiber, but the geometry is really hasn't changed a whole lot because the old guys nailed the geometry back then for racing. And so what we've done again, is we've uh, changed that whole thinking pattern into more, something more casual for the average rider. So it is, it is truly different. So would you mind sharing the world headquarters with us on <laughs> yeah. day six? Yeah, let's go look. All right, sounds good. So this is, this is one of our day six bikes. And um, what we did was when we started it, we basically just took, we listened to people and we looked at the, the, the boxes they wanted checked off. And there was 
five boxes that pretty much everybody talked about, especially as they get as we get older. And one of them was uh, they didn't want to bend over the handlebars, so we have higher handlebars. One of them was they didn't want a skinny seat, so we gave them a wider seat. Uh, they didn't want to um, have trouble getting on and off the bike, so we lowered the step through. They wanted to be able to reach the ground when they stopped, and so we lowered the seat. And then we added the backrest for comfort for those who wanted to get up hills and go further. Uh, we have the electric version. So we, we really um, checked off all the boxes that they were looking for when we designed it. What are the advantages of electric bike? Yeah, well, there's actually many. Uh, now, instead of uh, stopping your ride at a certain distance, you're going to be able to ride a lot further than you could before. Uh, they're going to be able to get you up hills. So it's going to change where you ride. People that traditionally would never ride a bike, even here in the hills, it's really difficult. So this allows you to get up and down the hills. Uh, people who are... Um, faster than others. Now people that are at different skill levels can ride together instead of never riding together. We see that a lot with husbands and wives and now we're getting them together again. Being able to go faster and further and up hills, ride with their grandkids, with their spouse, with athletes, there's no downside to that. And to be honest, if you don't want to turn the motor on, now you got an extra 16 pounds and you can get a better workout than you did before. So just, uh, they're awesome. They're, they're, they really are a uh, positive in every imaginable way. Where do you see it all going? Well, the beauty of being in the bike industry is there's, it's, there's so much variety here. I mean, we have a, a bike for people who have certain characteristics. They're older, they're heavier, they don't want to go as fast. But there's cargo bikes, there's racing bikes, there's carbon fiber bikes, there's aluminum bikes, there's uh, recumbent trikes, there's all kinds of things in this industry. And no matter where you're at, there's going to be a bike for you. And and, and it's going to help you no matter what you want to do. If you want to ride to the grocery store, if you want to ride to work, if you want to get a workout, if you want to go on a 40-mile ride on a beautiful bike path. Uh, they, they just do so much. And they allow you to take your body and do things you can't normally do. I mean, you can go 20 miles an hour on a bike pretty easily, but very few of us can run 20 miles an hour for an, a sustained time, maybe for 200 yards. But you can ride a bike for 10 miles at 20 miles an hour. So they just have so many benefits. They're not a lot of money and they give you um, fitness. They give you the chance to see the countryside, to get to work, to do all kinds of different things. On that note, it makes me want to ride a bike. Yeah, well, well I, you came to the right place. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.